Welcome. I'm Rick Blunt, pastor at Okemos Community Church, uh, bringing you a midweek uh, devotion, uh, a time to uh, reconnect with God and to uh, lift our spirits. Uh, I'm glad you have uh, joined us. If you can see this word, if I can hold it upright, uh, this word was on the board, the chalkboard, uh, in a seventh grade classroom at Bangor Middle School where I attended, and our teacher was uh, Mrs. Jackson. Now, Mrs. Jackson had lived in Michigan for a long time, uh, decades, but she was from the South, and she always carried that uh, Southern accent, that slight drawl. And one day when this word was on the board, I raised my hand and asked her what a Dieter Miner was. There were a few snickers in the classroom and then Mrs. Jackson said, well, Ricky, uh, a determiner is the article that uh, modifies a noun. And she went on to explain it probably beyond me in terms of grammar. Um, Dieter Miner, determiner, it depends on how you look at it. And uh, sometimes we need a shift in our thinking and thought, and I certainly did uh, that day. Sometimes we need to change our mind. Paul writes about that in Romans 12, in just three verses, one, two, three, he talks about renewing our minds. And so I came here to MSU today. Uh, you can see the campus uh, behind me. Uh, students are starting to move in now. There's many fewer than normal. Uh, there are only 2,000 moving onto campus as opposed to uh, 14,000. And uh, students are encouraged to stay in their home communities as all classes are online. But our local public schools and uh, private and parochial schools are opening or have opened. Uh, and so I was thinking about renewing our minds and, and what that does. I invite you to remember those first days. The first days of first grade and third grade and eighth grade and your senior year and, and what all was involved in it. Getting some new clothes and, and getting a new notebook. Uh, in my day, you got new lunch boxes and it, it might have Snoopy or um, some other character on it. Uh, first days and beginnings of school years were a, a time to um, be able to be someone new, to uh, remake yourself. You made new friends in your classes and um, exciting things lie ahead. It was a fresh start. Schools are about that renewing of our minds. When I went to seminary at Princeton, one of the things they did uh, sort of got compared to uh, boot camp uh, uh, in the military. They, they challenged all of our beliefs and our um, interpretations of scripture and uh, religion and church history. And they did it in order that we would be solid. We would know what we believed and why we believed it and how we interpreted scripture. They, they did it so that we would have a solid foundation, that we would be sure and we would have background to support us. Paul addresses a lot in these first three verses of chapter 12. In verse 1, he talks about uh, presenting our bodies, ourselves, if you will, versus presenting slain animals, as was often the custom. You'll remember that uh, Judaism was the first monotheistic uh, religion, the first uh, religion to believe in one God as opposed to those who believed in multiple gods, the God of the sun, the God of the moon, the God of rain, the God of um, 
uh, good crops and and you would need to pay homage to those gods and, and present them with uh, sacrificial offerings in order to win their favor. They needed to be appeased. They needed to earn God's love. The belief was that if your life was going good, if you had good health and you were uh, wealthy and stable, that means that you had done enough, you were in God's favor and God was blessing you. And if you happened to have uh, illness or uh, you were in debt and life was not going good, it meant that you uh, were not in God's favor and you needed to do something uh, different to improve your standing with God. Now, the problem with that kind of understanding of God, that theology, is it puts the human in control. We are in control of what happens totally by our actions. We're the cause agent. And how God responds is the effect. It's, it's a very egocentric um, kind of theology, very human-centric and it's kind of what Paul believed as a good, devout, practicing Jew. Still today, people have that kind of cause-effect uh, understanding of God. You'll hear it sometimes when people say, well, when I die, I, I hope when I get to heaven, I, I have more pluses on my uh, good deeds side than negatives on my mistakes side. As if our place in uh, eternity is determined by us and God really has no say. It would be as if God said, man, I really wanted that Rick Blunt here, but you know, he has 5,001 bad things and uh, only 4,999 good things on his chart. So what can I say? That's the way it is. But after Paul had his major conversion on the Damascus Road, he had to begin rethinking what he had always believed. He had to be, as he calls it, transformed by a renewing of the mind, transformed, changed. Uh, it goes back to the Greek word, uh, that has to do with uh, uh, like a caterpillar going into the cocoon and there's a metamorphosis and it comes out a butterfly, a, a process of change by the renewing of the mind. He needed to have a shift in thinking. He needed to begin to understand that we humans are not the cause agent but God is the cause agent. God acts, God loves us, God blesses us unconditionally before we even begin to act. And we respond to God with thanksgiving. And that thanksgiving is expressed as love. It's not that we love to earn God's love, it's that we have been loved. And so we love back as a response of thanksgiving. Our response is the effect. God is the cause agent. We are the effect. It flips everything upside down from what was commonly thought and believed at that time. It's not that we earn God's love, but we respond to God's love. We accept God's grace and mercy, and in thanksgiving, we love as we have first been loved. You see, our God is not looking for slain animals or even slain lives, but is looking for ourselves. We present ourselves as a living sacrifice meaning we live sacrificially, not thinking first of ourselves, but thinking first of others. Indeed, in the Christian story, our God became human 
and was slain once for all. The debt has been paid. And we are residents of our homeland with God, the one who created us in God's own image. That's our home, and we're currently living here on earth. We are foreigners in this place, looking forward to that time when we will be home. And like Mrs. Jackson, my seventh grade English teacher, who, who carried her uh, southern accent throughout her life, even after she had spent decades in Michigan, so we are called to live with remnants of heaven evident in our lives. The greatest evidence of heaven is love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love one another as I have loved you. Hear these verses from the 12th chapter of Romans. By the mercies of God, present your bodies, yourself, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. Pray with me. Oh God, as school years begin and people begin uh, first days at a new start, we pray your blessing upon them, especially in these most unusual times. We pray for students at all levels, that even when they're learning remotely and online and things seem so unusual, that you would bless them. We give thanks that you have given us minds and intellect and the ability to think and reason and we ask that you bless all our learning. We play, pray for our faculty and teachers who, who learn new skills and new technologies and how to teach and communicate in this new way. We pray for parents in the midst of struggling to uh, school their children at home and to balance uh, uh, their jobs and their other responsibilities with now the added task of monitoring children and uh, being the teacher, coach, and aide. We pray that you would, in the midst of all of that, let your Holy Spirit hover. We pray for calmness, for peace, uh, in all of those who are struggling to find balance. We pray for a world where there is much strife. We pray for the ongoing racial tensions with uh, other acts of violence, we dare to pray for peace with justice. We pray for those who, even as I record, are uh, suffering the ravages of uh, Hurricane Laura, for those who go to give aid, for in, be in the midst of all of that, O oh God. And bless our congregations, uh, OCC and the congregations of all those who might be watching. Uh, that we might be your conduit to spread your love and grace, to encourage people to live their faith so that indeed their lives are living sacrifices. Oh God, we need your presence and so we ask for it. Give us a sense of a new day, a new beginning, because you have washed away our sins in our past and you offer us newness of life this day. Amen. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this uh, has been helpful to you, and I would commend to you to read uh, Romans 12, uh, at least the first eight verses. They are uh, very powerful. If this has been helpful, it, it is, really helps a lot if you hit the like button. Uh, it helps even more if you write a comment, even if it's one or two words. Uh, and it's helpful if you share it on your Facebook feed or uh, your YouTube or send it in an email to someone so that we might grow the community finding uh, inspiration and hope in these uh, messages. 
We do want to highlight for you that we now have uh, this sermon and all our messages are available by phone. So if you know someone who doesn't have access to um, online and uh, would like to hear the message, they can dial 517-270-4011, 270 There will be a short um, uh, introduction of the message uh, from a computer-generated voice, and then all of the words spoken here will uh, play. I invite you to check out what's going on at Okemos Community Church. Uh, check out our website, okemosocc.org. Uh, find us on Facebook. Know that we continue to uh, be the church at work, making a difference in the world. We are glad uh, that you are partnering with us. Be blessed.